So I'm going to try to work my way through several of the problems from the chapter review on page 152. And we'll start with some one-step problems. The first one we're going to look at is number three. Remember that this equal sign, oops, this equal sign sort of divides our equation into two sides and we have to keep it balanced. So if we do inverse operations, we need to do them to both sides. In this case, we have b minus 16. And in order to figure out what b is, we have to do the inverse operation, which is plus 16. But if you do it to the left side, you have to keep it balanced and do it to the right side. And as you know, these 16s cancel out. So on the left, I'm left with b. And on the right, I do 20 plus 16, and I get 36. And that's the solution to that problem. On number 7, we have z minus 1 fourth equals 7 eighths. To do fraction problems with addition and subtraction, you really need uh, a common denominator. So I'm going to convert these to a common denominator and make this z minus 2 eighths equals 7 eighths. Remember, this thing is still divided by that imaginary line right down the equal sign. In this case, since we're subtracting 2 eighths, the inverse operation is plus 2 eighths. You have to do it to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. And when you do that, your 2 eighths cancel, which is good. We want to get z equals. So when you finish, you do have z equals 7 eighths plus 2 eighths is 9 eighths. And I prefer that you keep that as an improper fraction as long as it's reduced, which that one is. Let's scroll down here and take a look at a multiplication and division problems. Number 12, you have negative 30 equals n over 3. I like to have my variable on the left side of the equal sign. Remember, we still have that imaginary line down the middle there. So I flip the whole thing around, and I do n over 3 equals negative 30. We are doing n divided by 3, and the inverse operation would be to multiply by 3. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you do it on that side, you also have to do it on the right side. When you multiply by 3, the 3's cancel. And on the left, I end up with n equals, and then I do negative 30 times 3. Well, one's negative, one's positive. So that's going to end up being a negative. 3 times 30 is 90. Over here, we have negative 4.6r equals 9.2. The inverse operation for negative 4.6 times r is to divide by negative 4.6. But if you do it to that side, you also have to do it to the other side. And as you know, the 4.6s are going to cancel out to 1, which leaves us with 1 times r, which is r. And 9.2 divided by negative 4.6 is going to end up being a negative. And that value is 2. So r equals negative 2. Working our way over to some two-step problems on the next page here. For number 16, we have 4t minus 13 equals 57. Let's start with dealing with the 13. The inverse operation is plus 13. We do it to both sides. When we do that, the 13s cancel. And we end up with 4t left over on this side. And I don't know, 57 plus 13, that must be 70. The inverse operation for 4 times t is to divide by 4. We have to do it to both sides. And when you do that, as you know, the 4s cancel. And 
And so I end up with t equals 70 over 4. I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction, but I do need to reduce it. And when you reduce it, you get 35 over 2. Over here on number 22, another two-step equation. We're still splitting that thing right down on the equal sign. The inverse operation for plus 22 is minus 22. You have to do it to both sides. And as you know by now, these 22s are gone. So we end up with 8n equals, oh my goodness, that must be about 48. And the inverse operation for 8 times n is to divide by 8. And we do it to both sides. And those 8s are gone. So we're left with n equals 6 times 8 is 48. So n equals 6. Scrolling down to some more complicated problems. Number 25 is a little bit tricky because most of you will be tempted to subtract 3x from both sides. And that may not be a bad plan, but it's going to leave us with some extra steps. So I'm going to show you that I would probably do a minus 4x. When you have variables on both sides of the equal sign, you have to get them together by doing the inverse operation. You can't just add them together. In this case, my 4x's will disappear over here. And I'll end up with 2 equals negative 1x, because 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And you know that I don't like to have that x on the, on the right side, so I'm going to flip this thing over. So I end up with x equals when I'm done. When it's negative 1 times x, the inverse operation is to divide by negative 1. And 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. This 